From the Weather NorCal Command Center, this is your morning update. Good morning, everyone. I want to give you a quick reminder that every Monday is a new episode of Turtle Bay Wonderful World of Animals brought to you by Cottonwood Vet and Small Animal Clinic. All you got to do is go to weathernorcal.com, click on the Animal Family segment, then you'll see, of course, see kind of a Turtle Bay logo. Just click on that and you can watch any of the episodes and, of course, the latest one that is uploaded new one every Monday morning. And of course, you can also see that on um, Coffee with Kruger. We also, also aired there as well. All right. You can watch it from, of course, weathernorcal.com. As I mentioned, you can also access it from the free Weather Norcal app. All right. So the heat wave continues. More record-breaking heat is on the horizon over the next few days. Hot and dry conditions, unfortunately, is going to keep that fire danger high, but there is cooler weather on the horizon, but we'll get into that a little bit later here. We set an all new, all time record high at the Reading Airport. Now, I'm not gonna go into the debate about, but it was hotter in, in my grandma's backyard in 1972 or whatever year, right? We're not gonna get into that. We're gonna go off the official high coming in from the National Weather Service. That's what I gotta go by, all right, folks? I'm not going off of your memory or your recollection from several years ago. And I'm not debating that you didn't see it, okay? But we're going to go off the official highs off the National Weather Service. 118 degrees three times. That was the all-time high before this past Saturday where we saw a high of 119 degrees. And of course, several other records were broken. And you know, we are not only the ones looking for ways to cool off. How about this hummingbird cooling off in Cottonwood, courtesy of Ellie Delgado. Going off in that bird bath there and, of course, just trying to stay cool and maybe even trying to get a little bit of a bath in there as well. But uh, send in your photos if you want to share your photos of you or a bird or a dog or anybody trying to cool off during this heat. Or if you have a beautiful sunrise, sunset picture or just a, a great picture you want to share in general, I want to share at least one a day a new one every day. And I want to see more of you doing it. I want to see some new names in there as well. I love all of you that are consistently sending the pictures to you. I love all of you, all right? But I want to start seeing more people consistently uh, from di with different names. Let's do that. But just go to the free Weather Norcal app and you can download it from there. So here is your neighborhood at a glance. Yes, it's going to be another hot day. Temperatures most likely over 100 degrees, even for the higher elevations, of course, not to mention the valley. But the coast is finally starting to see a bit more of that marine layer along the coast. And that's going to keep things much more seasonable there. This is good to see the Thompson fire. When you start getting in these colors, this is the, these are heat signatures from over five, six, seven days ago. So we're not seeing much activity, if any, really, from the Thompson fire. Okay, but oh boy, I tell you what. Even I, I posted on social media uh, an update on the Shelley fire, and within a half hour, forty five minutes of that of that update, a lot more had occurred. It gotten bigger. We're seeing it grow. And this is not what we want to see. You'll notice, you see, this is the older. This is kind of uh, from, you know, the last couple of days. You start, you see the yellows and oranges, but the red, the red is the most recent within the last six to 12 hours. And so what that tells us, that gives us an idea where that growth is, right? So here was the fire and there's the, the activity kind of moving itself to the north and east. We don't want to see this. And the thing is, we're starting to get closer. Here's here's Scott Valley right here. There's Etna. Okay. And then of course Fort Jones just up to the north of that. But this right here is the area the firefighters have to kind of watch very closely. All right. So here you can see the latest fire perimeter coming in. You'll see the kind of the lighter shades here. That's where we saw that growth. And that's what that uh, the last map I showed you shows that growth. So the main perimeter was here. And then right here as well. So the growth has moved up northward here. We've also seen some new growth. So this part of the fire and this part of the fire kind of joined together. And now it's kind of in there. This little dot was tiny yesterday. Now it's a little bit bigger here. So again, we're seeing more of that growth. This fire is getting larger. Look at that, over 3,380 acres. Unfortunately, 0% containment. But look at the terrain. 
I mean, this is a very desolate area, uh, very uh, rugged terrain, and it's making it much more difficult for the firefighters. Giving an idea of the distance of the fire perimeter to some of the communities like Greenview, for example, about eight miles, 8.3 miles from Etna, as far as the Shelley fire is concerned. We take you to the south, and again, we take a look at the fire perimeter of the Thompson fire it hasn't grown, but what has grown is the containment. That's good. We're only 6% 6 away from being 100% contained. So this is becoming a fire that is going to start getting more and more off of our radar and we don't have to be as concerned about it. Before we get to the smoke forecast, and I'm going to, I'm going to kind of show you right here. There, of course, you can see some of the smoke that we have there. But before we get to that, I want to show you the latest uh, camera image. Now I'm gonna show you a time lapse from the last 12 hours. So kind of show you the activity we saw overnight. So kind of move the camera around a bit, but you can clearly see just how active the fire was yesterday evening and last night, producing a lot of smoke. And of course it gets a little, it looks a little worse than it is because at night it uh, tends to get out of focus. So it makes it look worse than it is. But this is what we don't wanna see. We are looking from a vantage point near Fort Jones right now. There's the latest image right there. You see the glow? We're beginning to see this move over those mountain ridges and then getting on this side of the valley. That's not what we want to see, but that growth that we're seeing is clearly showing that. And here's a here's a just kind of a looking at the hot spot coming in from the Shelly fire. You can kind of see it swells up then it breaks down, then it swells up again, then it starts to swell up. So what's happening is we're seeing it kind of uh, depending on what's going on with the winds or if it gets into some more of that dry brush or trees or whatnot. But we can see it kind of pulsating where it kind of strengthens, then it gets weaker, then it strengthens again. And we can only hope that it doesn't strengthen a whole lot before that. Now, one of the things I also wanted to show you here, and I couldn't get the, the latest fire perimeter is not available just yet, but this one is on watch duty. The North Fire is another fire of concern that obviously has also created some uh, evacuation orders in that area. The North Fire is in Modoc County. And you can see here, the fire has been mapped at 4,379 acres by Firus. Of course, that's why we can't really get uh, access to that just yet. The perimeter can be viewed on the watch duty map, which is right here. Uh, current view of the fire above. Of course, you can see there from the, that was at 818 last night. So again, you can see the evacuation orders uh, that are in the area. So this is a big fire. Uh, so kind of it's south of El Taurus right now, southeast of California Pines. Um, and if we kind of get off here, we maybe can start to see some other towns that are in here. Uh, Menlo Baths, right? Uh, Eagle Peak. Um, so get an idea. Looks like it has been growing for the most part to the east. Uh, as of right now. And again, you can see all of the evacuation orders. In fact, the evacuation order does go into just west of Fort Jones. We head down Highway 3 here, all the evacuation warnings that kind of butt up against Highway 3. Look at this. In Greenview, there actually is an evacuation order that was issued last night. It includes Main Street, First Street, for example, and at South Kidder Creek Road as well. Then we head south on Highway 3, all of the evacuation warnings, meaning be ready. That's all the yellow that takes you south into Etna. Now, most of Etna is actually not part of the evacuation warning, but I would say it's probably still a safe bet for you to really be prepared for the fact that, you know, there may eventually be an order for you as well. So we've got to watch this closely. This is something that we've got to watch very closely. All right. Um, let's take a look at the fire. And so, of course, the main plumes of smoke coming in from are from Kelly. Now, what we're seeing here excuse me, Shelly, uh, we're seeing the smoke kind of do a little circular rotation here. 6 a.m. Uh, tomorrow morning, you see how it kind of pushes to the north and then it kind of pushes to the east and then eventually kind of pushing more to the south here. So we start to see these plumes of smoke. Now, keep in mind, the smoke will really depend on just how active the fire is. But again, we're looking at the winds and I, I don't like seeing it get above 15 miles per hour. We're seeing that. Now, they're from the south. That helps a little bit, but that's still drying things out. So as we go into tomorrow morning, you'll notice the winds are fairly calm. That's good. That's looking much better. But then the winds kind of pick back up again, especially off to the east and even the, the valley. 
Now, we got to watch, of course, where the Shelly fire is off to the western Siskiyou County and the humidity. We are seeing some decent recovery overnight with that humidity, but it dries out significantly through the afternoon. We're down in the teens for Etna, and of course, it can be the case here west of that as well, single digits for the valley. Now we take you into tomorrow morning. Again, we're seeing some decent recovery, 30, 40% in the valley, over 30% in Etna. That's good. We want to see the humidity go up overnight, but then it see how it starts to drop again. And, you know, of course, we're, we're looking at the fire off in the Modoc County. You've got to watch for that as well. It's grown significantly. So the fire weather risk for today is still within the uh, we'll call it very high range, not quite in that extreme, but what we're noticing here, even for the mountains, we're seeing a lot of that higher fire danger as well. A lot of oranges on the map here, indicating at least the high to very high range. We're well within that very high range tomorrow again. So it's that time of the year where pretty much every day the fire danger is high, but it's the winds that we really have to keep a close eye on. The heat alerts, they've been extended for the valley through the entire week, this week through Friday. Uh, a lot of these off to the west are going to expire in the next day or two. And of course, these have been extended off through Friday as well. So as I mentioned, yes, we are seeing temperatures dropping. They're not as hot as they were this past weekend, but at least we're beginning to see some relief from that heat. However, I mean, again, you can see just how much it's impacting the entire western United States with all the watches, warnings and advisories. Big ridge of high pressure still in place. That's the dominant feature. That's what's keeping our temperatures high. But on Saturday, this ridge was right on top of us. But as expected, it shifted to the south. And as a result, our temperatures dropped a little bit. We're still within that dome of high pressure and that's why it's still very hot. But look what happens. We see it drop a little bit here for today and tomorrow in particular. So temperatures drop a little bit more but then they build again. This builds just to the east of us. So that dome of high pressure is still on top of us, still very hot. Then finally by the weekend, next weekend, we're seeing that push off to the east. That's significant. This is gonna allow some, what we'll call it just warmer air, more mild air that'll be moving in here as we do go into the beginning of next week. Now, another thing I'm tracking here is the consecutive number of days we've seen 110 plus degree temperatures. 1978 was the record as well as 1988. Not too far behind that was in 1920 with five consecutive days when it was 110 degrees or higher. Straight, a stretch of that, right? So far, since July 3rd, when we saw our first 110 degree plus, we're at five days since yesterday. Today, of course, it's going to be about 114 degrees. So we are going to, I'm 100% confident that we are going to at least match and meet that six days straight of 110 plus. But what's interesting when we look at our 10 day trend, check this out. So there's that sixth day right here of 110 plus in Reading. We just may drop barely below 110 degrees on Tuesday. So remember I was talking about on Tuesday, the temperature drops slightly, but then they go back up as that ridge builds off to our east goes back up to 110 plus one, two, three, like another three days. However, if this decides to just barely tick up to 110, now we're easily going to break that six consecutive straight days. So we'll see what happens with that. But temperatures do drop by Sunday and they'll kind of level out again as we go into next week, but at least we're breaking away from 110, uh, but still in the lower 100s. The normal high this time of the year is about 99 degrees, by the way. So you can see your wave heights for today. They are dropping a little bit here. Not really that concerned about the wave heights if you do need to be on a small boat, uh, but there is going to be some of that patchy dense fog out there. Uh, there's your high and your low tide for today with those winds from the northwest at about five to 10 knots. All right, here's your Trinity County neighborhood forecast. Yet another hot day. Temperature is most likely 100 degrees or higher through at least the first half of the weekend. We take you off to the north coast. Temperature is mid 60s on average for the coast here for the next seven days. And of course, still very hot inland with temperatures most likely above 100 degrees or 100 degrees or higher through Saturday. Then by Sunday, the temperature should start to drop. That's pretty much the case here, even for places like Mount Shasta, although eventually by, for uh, Mount Shasta, by Friday and this weekend in particular, we're below 100 degrees here. Modoc County, yeah, I mean, you're talking 102 degrees for Alturas, uh, hovering around 100 degrees, give or take, through Friday. Then we should see that dip in our temperatures by this upcoming weekend. Your eastern mountain. 
Washington's neighborhood forecast. Temperatures around 100 degrees at least through Saturday. By Sunday, you drop down to about 95. In your Valley neighborhood forecast, brought to you by NorCal Tractor, it's 100 degrees or higher, but at least we're going to be breaking away from 110 plus by this upcoming weekend. It'll be noticeably not as hot. Let's just put it this way, that way. Uh, but still, 114 degrees for Redding, 112 degrees for Anderson, uh, excuse me, for uh, Red Bluff today, uh, and Palisadro about 115 degrees. So we take a look at your seven day outlook for Redding. There it is. Again, maybe breaking that streak of 110 plus by tomorrow before we go back up to 110 plus Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But there you can see the dip in our temperatures as we go into this upcoming weekend. At Wind River Resort and Casino, we like to celebrate life's little moments. Oh, and the big ones too. Because around here, when you're completely in the moment, that's when the magic happens. Come in and find your moment at Wind River Resort and Casino.